Hello everybody, I'm Don Counts. Welcome into Fayetteville Public Utilities Channel 6. Today we have a legend coach in the house, Mr. Kyle Bills. How you doing, Coach Bills? Hey Don, good to, have, good to be here. Good to see you. Uh, a lot of people around Fayetteville, Lincoln County are going to know that you coached ball here uh, from 1984 to 1991 and uh, uh, some of the most successful times mm. at Lincoln County High School. Yeah, it's a great time. It was a great time for me professionally. Uh, uh, from a coaching standpoint, it's a great time for my family. Uh, uh, just, just some of the best years uh, that we spent in the profession were spent right here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, where you're from and uh, then we'll lead into what yeah. brought you to Lincoln County. Well, I grew up in Tullahoma, Tennessee, and so having played football, baseball, and basketball, all through, I was very, very familiar with uh, Fayetteville, mm. uh, the old Central High School, which is who we competed against yeah. uh, back in the day. And uh, so I knew of, of the athletes they had here, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the athletic programs. And uh, <clears throat> when I finished my schooling at uh, Knoxville uh, in education, uh, I wanted to coach. Uh, my first job was at Good Pasture Christian School in Madison, just outside of Nashville. And that was a fortunate job for me because I worked under uh, who I still think was probably one of the best head coaches in basketball uh, that you could ever want to work for. And his name was Ronnie Sarver. <clears throat> and I worked under him for five years. I first was his junior high coach uh, and uh, his, his assistant coach. And I did that for five years, and he ran a great program. He knew the game inside and out. He was a strict disciplinarian in every way. Uh, I couldn't have worked for a better guy, and he was, he was highly successful. I think we went to the state tournament four out of the five years we were there and uh, won the district most of the time and the region most of the time. And so I had a very uh, good man to work under. So I'll, I'll be indebted to him, you know, forever oh, yeah. uh, in helping me uh, get my uh, feet under me and stable as far as coaching. Well, during that fifth year, you know, you start getting antsy, fourth or fifth year. Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, taking a head coaching job somewhere. And so we're sitting in the coaching office one day uh, there, and I pick up the Tennessean, and I see there a, a tidbit that says uh, Lincoln County High School. Uh, is looking for a basketball coach. And it was intriguing at first because I saw Lincoln ha ha County High School. I was not aware at the time that they had consolidated all the schools in Lincoln County. And uh, so I immediately started thinking about that and remembering uh, playing against Central High School and picked up the phone and called and uh, expressed interest in the job. And it was not long after that that uh, I was uh, on my way down here to talk with Coach Evans, Billy Joe Evans. And uh, we had a great interview. I think we had a couple of interviews. He interviewed several people and talked to several people. And things moved along pretty quick, quickly. And uh, uh, I took the job, uh, was grateful uh, for having the job, and started just as soon as I could, which was that summer. Let's talk about the, the, there's so much there to talk about. Yeah. First of all, the first season, tell a little bit about the, the first season. Well, <clears throat> the first season, uh, the previous year, uh, Sam Ezell, uh, great guy, and I played against Sam's team as oh, a player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I remember playing against his teams. His teams played really hard, and they were good teams. Is this the, this the one right we're talking about here? No, that, the, I don't have a picture. Oh, you don't, I don't have that? Yeah, right. I do. The very first team. The very first team. The very I got first you right team. here. There you go. There we go. We do That's have it. That's uh, uh, it, it. It was a team that had, had been basically successful the previous year, but Sammy Zell uh, had left at the Christmas break to take the principalship at the junior high. Oh. Central Junior High. And so his assistant, Alvin Palmer, took over from the second half of the season, mm -hmm. okay, and guided them then. And so they were, they were kind of orphans, in a sense, mm -hmm. when I was hired. 
And so I came down that summer and started, started working with this bunch right here, and I knew we had talent. Uh, we had a lot of talent, but I, don't, I, I, don't, I can't say that they knew how to play basketball the way I saw that, it, that we needed to play it. And so there was a buy-in process, as there always is, is with a new, new coach. And mm -hmm. they tested me, but I, I'm really proud of this bunch uh, because, you know, this is the first team in Lincoln County history to win the district tournament uh, that we hosted. And uh, that was a big deal because Columbia was kind of the big cheese uh, when we got here. They had kind of owned this district. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were uh, of the mindset that there was going to be a new, a new king in town, and, and it happened quickly for us in this case mm -hmm. uh, because of, of, of a good senior class. Benny Jennings and Anthony uh, <laughs> uh, Shelton. Okay. Sure. Benny and Anthony Shelton were kind of the bell cows of that bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, Benny and Anthony were both really good athletes, not great basketball players, but really good, bas really good athletes. Uh, they were both starters on that team, along with Ross Bryson, who was a junior. He was a starter. Uh, Tommy Barnes, right here in the middle, was a kid that I got to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I did when I got down here was went to the football field. <laughs> and I hung out at the football field for every practice because I wanted not only to establish a relationship with the kids that I knew played football, but I knew they had athletes on the football field that weren't playing basketball. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to get Tommy that way. Don Thomas, you see right there, who's still, I guess he's still with the school system yeah. down here. Mm -hmm. uh, Don played for a while with us that year and he had never played before. And I think Don wanted to be a, be a part of something that was very successful as well. Curtis Scholl was another senior on that team. Uh, we had uh, Vince Bond was a senior. Vince was the uh, was from Blanche. He was the only school only player from Blanche that was on that school uh, on that team. He was a backup guard. And it's a sad story about Vince. Uh, I believe it was the following year that Vince was was killed in a single car automobile accident. And I remember going to his uh, funeral, and that was a sad deal for me. Also, David Quick, my assistant coach was killed during that year. Uh, he was uh, riding a bicycle just right off the square up here, and he was hit by a car. So there's some sadness in that picture to me uh, there. But uh, uh, this, this team was uh, really special because it was that first district AAA tournament tournament championship team. 17 and six year. 17 and six, it was a bad year for weather. Oh. We had, I guess, six games wow. that were postponed, mm -hmm. and we couldn't make them up, so then they got canceled. So, oh, gotcha. you know, that's not many games in basketball, 17-6 no. uh, and six record, especially when you go to the region tournament. Sure. But sure. Uh, the, I very, very, that, that, was, that was the first team, and uh, they hold a special place in my heart. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of those guys still around, and we still see. And, yeah. And... Uh, uh, it's interesting to hear the stories of uh, what kind of athletes they were, yeah. uh, and and still uh, most of them are doing quite well, and that's good. I know you have some successes and some maybe not so much. Yeah, that's over true. The years uh, and another another player or two that I'd mention, you know, Monty uh, Hall. Oh yeah. Uh, Monty was Monty was just a really good kid, and uh, he started on that team as a junior. Mm -hmm. Very good shooter, a really good baseball player. Monty was. But just a just a wonderful kid and quite spoken, humble kid. And uh, another kid, Doug Eccles, he went on into the I believe it was the Air Force with a was a pilot I believe, and and some others. They've they've all done as you say uh, really really well. And Ross Bryson, he was a he's a big guy now. He was pretty big back then. Ross was a big guy, and I don't know if you knew what Ross's nickname was. But, uh, they called him Bread Truck. Bread Truck. And uh, our fans were great at that time. I mean we. We packed this place over here. We'd put 3,000 in there in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. So we have some pictures yeah. somewhere that shows yeah. uh, some, some sports articles where uh, they're literally sitting on the floor. They are. You know, the, 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 the fire chief was our buddy. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> and it, the, 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 the bleachers were packed, and literally, as you saw, there were people sitting three deep around, around the court during that time. But 
One game I remember we come up, we, we're coming into it, and we come out of the dressing room and our whole student body has sunbeam bread. Oh. <laughs> just twirling around over and over like that. Uh -huh. And that was in, you know, honor of the bread truck showing <laughs> up, Ross. Wow. Uh, you know, Ross was a really good player his junior year. And Ross had not played football. And uh, I think Lewis had gotten him to come out that senior year. And that had my blessings. Ross would have been a great defensive end, which was what he was playing. <laughs> but he got his knee torn up. Mm. And uh, he came back during the basketball season. But bless his heart, his senior year, he, and he loved basketball. He loved it. He wasn't what he, what he could have been. Mm -hmm. And I hated that for him. I hated it for our team. Sure. Because he was a key cog, mm -hmm. and uh, he just never could get back to mm -hmm. what he would have been. Yep. Well, that's the 84-85 season. I, what, uh, the 86 season and 87 season, you, you, there's a couple of uh, players here. I don't know if we have any photographs of it, but uh, that's uh, Quincy Vance and Andre Parks. Yeah, we've got some pictures of them here in a minute when okay. they're upperclassmen. But, okay. Uh, I don't know if I just overlooked that or not, but okay. that was that was a, a young team. Okay. Uh, as I said, that was a senior-dominated team, mm -hmm. and really the rebuilding began the next year. And there's a great story behind Coach Evans that I want to share in that okay. as well. Uh, I think that team went nine and sixteen, I believe was, and I mean uh, the sixteen losses that we had. They were nail biters. We didn't get blown out by anybody, but we started all year long. We started three to four sophomores. Uh, we started Quincy as a sophomore. We started uh, Clifford Edmiston or Phil Bonner as sophomores. Mm -hmm. And we started Wallace Greer some as a sophomore, not very much. Mm -hmm. The seniors that we played that year were Lance Fisk mm -hmm. and uh, Andre Parks. And uh, good, ki good, good players, okay? Uh, not, the, not the talented basketball players that we had had the previous year as far as your senior class. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're really starting over. Mm -hmm. But Lance and Andre gave us everything they could. Mm -hmm. uh, those under, underneath them uh, as well uh, uh, gave, gave us, you know, sure. what they could. Uh, and, 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 and that team really, really, really worked hard and, and progressed through the year and got better and better. And I felt like I had a chance uh, uh, to do something in the district tournament. But we were just too young. Yeah. Uh, we were too young. We were not uh, good enough players yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it was coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just weren't ready. So it's a building year. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of that year, this is a story I wanted to get to. At okay. the end of the year, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling great <laughs> because, you know, I'm not used to, used to losing more right. than, I, than right. we win, never have been. Mm -hmm. And so I get a, I get a memo that says, uh, Coach uh, Evans wants to see you in his office. Uh, what the heck is this, you know, about? <laughs> so uh, I, 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 on my free period, I go down to, uh, to the office and Coach Evans invites me in and sits me down and he says, he looks me in the eye and he says, how you doing? I said, well, not great. <laughs> uh, you know, you've worked, you've worked hard yeah. and you hadn't had a good year. And he says, well, I want to tell you, he says, you're doing a great job. Wow. You're doing a great job. And I want you to know that. And I don't know if I ever expressed it to him, but boy, did that mean a lot to me. Wow. Okay. Second year I was here and uh, not having a good year. But him being a coach, he recognized who I was. Mm -hmm. He recognized what we had done. He recognized what we had had. And he gave me just a tremendous amount of encouragement. And I'll say this too. When he interviewed me, you know, I asked questions in the interview as well. Mm -hmm. I asked Coach Evans, because I wanted to see if they meant business here. And I said, what do you want in me? here at Lincoln County. And he looked straight at me and he said, I want a state championship. <laughs> you can't get any higher than that. That's right. So when he said that, I knew that I would take the job. Well, you know as a coach, the support staff, uh, how important that is. Oh, it is. And you know, I had a good AD 
Jimmy Ellis, who was the athletic director at that time. And uh, Jimmy was very good to me. And uh, uh, they had a lot of late nights because of me. <laughs> but uh, they were in support of not only my program, but football and everything else there. Just a great administration and faculty that was supportive. You know, that's important. I'd have something going on with a student in class. Uh, his grades weren't where they needed to be. He wasn't getting the work in on time. They would come see me on the front end, let me know I could get to the kid, tell them what's, what's up with that, mm -hmm. and we could make that correction in time where we wouldn't have an eligibility issue. Right. So, you know, we, that, that, that faculty and that school under Coach Evans' guidance worked, worked hand in hand. And us. looking back at that time, the school was relatively new. It was, you know, and uh, I had a, a, one boy came to me later and he said he said he said I remember you saying this to the to us in the in the uh, in the dressing room he says you came in and you said we're not Blanche anymore and we're not Flintville anymore and we're not Central anymore and uh, whoever we're not them we're the Lincoln County Falcons and that shirt that you're wearing says Lincoln County Falcons on it in front of it. Mm -hmm. And that's who we are. And when we go, we go and play, people are going to know who we are. And they're not going to want to see us coming. To, they, they're not going to want to see, see us coming to town. That's right. And so uh, he said, you know, I wanted to run the door for you that day. <laughs> and, yeah, that's who we are. Well, that's the thing, you know, during those years, it was uh, a big transition yeah. for the people from Flintville Blanche and, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, Boone's Hill and all the places they come from. Uh, so uh, this kind of thing, as you know, yeah. unites the school. Yeah. And, you know, I saw some of that resentment of sure. the old schools being closed and, you know, people saying, well, you're not going to look at these kids. They're, our kids are going to be left out. That never happened. No, no. Uh, we, we, you know, if a kid could play, he could play. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we took care of those, t and, and you're right, the success that we had on the athletic field and on the court brought this community together in a very special way. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the next year, 87, 88. Uh, uh, looks like their uniforms may have changed a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think Coach Ellis, he got off of his little tight wad <laughs> self that year and allowed us to, allowed us to, uh, buy new uniforms. Uh, no, I, I say that very facetiously. We, we got exactly what we, we wanted. Looks like you got Coach Alvin Palmer. Yeah. Everybody knows him. Coach Alvin, he, I'd stayed on him because he added something very special, okay, uh, to our program. I had had uh, David, and then after David, Jack Raby, uh, yeah. good friend of mine, great friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Jack had assisted me a couple of years. I don't know if it was uh, a year after this. I know he did the year before this some. But uh, Alvin was with me for the duration of the time down. Uh, uh, we, were, we were here, but this team, was a, this team was a great team, okay? They went 28 and three. Uh, the two teams that, the two games that we lost in the regular season were in Memphis. Oh. Uh, we lost to a team, uh, Memphis East. They had two kids. Uh, a Douglas boy and a kid named Billy Smith that all both started for the Tigers at Memphis, and a team out of Mississippi. That were our, that was our two losses during the during the regular season. Uh, we our final loss was in the in the state tournament against Franklin, and when we played them at Vanderbilt, and uh, that game still that game still hurts. Oh yeah, because you, you have that here on VHS, yeah. back here behind, that uh, uh, you say that one still bothers you. Still bit. bothers me. We had a lead in that game. Quincy got in foul trouble. He had to come out. And uh, we just lost a lead, and we went on a scoring drought there, and uh, we just couldn't recover. And, uh, you know, I thought, I thought many times what I would have done differently in the course of that game, and not a thing. It just wasn't meant to be that night, and I hated it for our community. Mm -hmm. uh, our community was there. I mean, the whole lower level <laughs> at Vanderbilt was wow. red, white, and blue. Wow. But, uh, yeah, this team was, was really a good team. They, again, won the district. 
We won it three years in a row. They won the region, won that three years in a row. Uh, we beat, uh, um, uh, that was Cleveland in the sub-state, I believe. Uh, just beat them 70 to 38. And then went to the state tournament and were upset by Franklin. This team was rated all year long number two in the state of Tennessee. One, uh, there was a team, I believe, uh, out of Memphis that was ahead of us that year. But our seniors that year <clears throat> were uh, Quincy Vance. Quincy signed with Middle Tennessee State University. Quincy started there for four years. Wow. And uh, he's a successful coach now outside of New York City wow. at a private school there. He was a senior. This is uh, uh, Chris and uh, his last name right now. Interesting. I can't recall, but Chris was a backup. He was a senior on that team. Uh, let's see who else were senior. Okay, Clifford. If if you if you can love a player, that's one I loved. I'll never forget him coming over uh, for our practices in the spring from Central when he was moving up to the high school, along with uh, uh, Phil and Wallace and Quincy. That kid, he would, he was like a sponge. And I told him, I saw something special about him. I said, you can be the best defensive player Lincoln County has or ever will have. And he took that to heart. And let me tell you what he was. He was the best defensive player I ever had. Wow. And uh, he went on and signed at Motlow State, then went down and played at a NAIA school in Alabama, got his degree, and uh, he has worked at Nissan for, for years. Uh, Phil, Phil Bonner was, a, was another off guard on that team. J.J. Jordan was a starting guard. J.J. was a really, really good guard. I'll tell you a story about J.J. J.J. was a good athlete, a pretty good basketball player. We were playing in Memphis against uh, Memphis Treadwell. Treadwell had a guard by the name of Anthony Penny Hardaway. And he went on, of course, to be an All-American at Memphis. He's in the NBA Hall of Fame. And now is the head coach at Memphis. He was an unbelievable player. And if he got the ball in transition, you just forget it. He's going to score. <laughs> so we went into that game with J.J. And I told J.J., I said, J.J., in, in our... In our and our, and our plans, I said, J.J., we're not going to use you on the offensive boards at all today. I said, as soon as the ball goes up on the offensive end, we're going to have one man back, which is going to be Doug, our point guard. We're going to have the other three are going to the boards. You're going straight to Hardaway. And your job is to deny Hardaway the ball. Do not let Hardaway get the ball off the rebound or in transition off a pass. <laughs> and he did a great job of that. He did his job. He did his job. We beat Treadwell down there, which just shocked all the people at Memphis. And, uh, and, and years later, I saw Penny at a tournament later on in my coaching career somewhere else. We're playing at Penny's tournament now in Memphis after he's retired. And I said, Penny, my name's Kyle Bills. I said, I'll tell you about something. See if you remember it. <clears throat> he said, you lost a game in the Memphis Invitational <clears throat> your senior year. And a coach came out and helped you up off the floor after you got beat by a little old country school called Lincoln County. Do you remember that? And he looked at me with a big smile and he said, were you that coach? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He said, I remember it very well. Wow. Because, uh, you know, they were expected to win their, the Memphis Invitational Tournament. Mm -hmm. So we won the first two games and this team went on to, uh, to play in the uh, Coliseum, wow. the Pyramid, which is now Bass Pro Shop down yeah. there now. Wow. Doug Smith, uh, I can't say enough about Doug. He's probably the best point guard I've seen in high school. And he was a junior uh, on that team. Uh, Doug, <clears throat> he got the Memphis crowd behind us while he was down there. Oh. Doug was a flashy player, not a, not a, not a show-off player. Tremendous ball handler, tremendous vision. And, you know, he could get the ball to the guys anywhere, anytime. And after they saw Doug make a couple of his passes down at Memphis, 
They got behind us <laughs> when we played anybody else. They fell in love with them down there. Wow. But this was a great team. Great this team. was a team that could have won the state. Wow. They could have won the state, but we didn't. And I hated it for them. And yeah. uh, uh, just, just a really good bunch. Yep, that's uh, that's some some good guys there. And Doug went on. I think he's going to play ne the next year. We'll talk a little bit more yeah. about him on your next year. Okay. We're going to move forward, I guess, here to 88 and 89. Yeah, yeah, okay. This would be Doug's senior year, right? That's correct. <laughs> yeah, Doug and Jason East. Jason East was from uh, Flintville. Oh, yeah. And uh, Jason was a big kid, about a 6'5 kid. He was solid. He came in here and he started for us all three years, okay? Uh, Jason did, or at least two years at the four position. Quincy started at the five. We moved him to the five position when Quincy left and we moved Danny Allen to the four position. Doug was still back at one. Uh, uh, Chris Wright came in and he played at three. And our two man was JJ. JJ was back again. This was, uh, oh, excuse me, Kevin. Kevin was starting that year either uh, as a sophomore as well. So somebody got bumped in that bunch. I don't know exactly who it was, but it was a deeper team than this team here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this team here, again, won the district championship again, won the region championship again, uh, went to the uh, state, sub-state tournament. Uh, we got beat on a last second shot against Cleveland, the team that we'd beat the previous year. Uh, on a last, it hit the shot at the buzzer, beat us mm. by two at home. We were hosting it. This team was good enough to win the state tournament, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but fell a little short. Kevin was a bell cow. Uh, Doug was, Danny was. Danny, Danny it was only about uh, six, three, three-ish, but Danny, he had length. Mm. He wasn't six, three in length and six, three in arms. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, Danny played more like he was 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Chris Wright came on that year as a, as a player. Chris was a tremendous shooter, shot the ball really well. Uh, Chad was a good player, uh, good backup player. Uh, Randall Buchanan was on that team. Uh, Myron Parks, I don't know if some might remember Myron. Yeah. Dante Allen would start the next year. Myron would start the next year. Uh, this is Chris Reese. I don't think Chris played after this year. Uh, and of course, our managers. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here going through this and not mentioning my managers. Uh, my managers were as much a part of the team as, Absolutely. as any. And this was Sam's boy, Sammy Zell's boy. And okay. this was uh, Chris Gross here. Hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, just a, just a really, 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 really good team. 28 and seven. 28 and seven. We won 28 games a row three years in a row, I should say. We won the district AAA three years in a row. We won the region three years in a row. Of course, went to the sub-state all those years and went to the state tournament two of those years. So uh, it, was, it was really a great, great time to be, be I guess, here. Sir, to look, uh, zoom in on this yeah. picture. Tell us a little bit about this picture here that we're seeing. Yeah, this is the 89-90, uh, I believe, okay. team and uh, this team really overachieved. And again, it was a 28 win year for this team right here. Uh, I'm trying to, Kevin Dixon, Kevin would have been a senior this year. Danny would have been a senior. Chris Wright would have been a senior, I believe. Uh, Dante would have been a senior. JJ would have been a senior. Uh, I think Myron was a senior that year. Chad Harrison, he was a kid that uh, we got out of the football program. Mm -hmm. And Chad was just, Chad was one of these guys, you hear about these guys that uh, they don't look like players, but buddy, they are. <laughs> and Chad was one, of, Chad, he played hard. He played smart. He became very fundamentally sound. And he was key, he was key for us. And we had Chad and Danny both coming back the next year and they both got hurt. They both had knee injuries. And uh, I mean, we would have had an outstanding team the next year. We won uh, 19 games my last year. I think it went 19 and 10 my last year here. But we lost those two kids and uh, they would have been, been really good. But this was another, another good team. Kevin 
was probably our most prolific offensive player. After three years, uh, I think he averaged 20, 20 points a game over his career, not just in the, the season, but over his career. He was a Talk about these player. three guys. I think she's Yeah, a that was at the conclusion of the uh, region tournament, I believe, that at that time was held over in Shebbeville. Mm -hmm. And uh, those three guys made an uh, all, all region tournament, and all of them deserved to make it. That would be Kevin. Uh, in the middle, that's Danny on one side, Danny Allen on one side, and Chris Wright on the other. And uh, I believe uh, at that year, Kevin was MVP. Kevin was MVP of the district uh, that year, and uh, Quincy was MVP of the district when he was here. Doug was MVP. So we had three guys that were MVP in our district uh, three years. You have... Uh, oh, oh. We've, you've had uh, somebody help you, your wife, you said, help you keep all this stuff together because as a coach, you don't have time to do all that. But I know you have, uh, the thing about sports is, and you've lived it your life, is the recall. You can look yeah. back and think about the Vanderbilt game, but you yeah. also see the successes too. You remember them like they were yesterday. Well, I, let me tell you what, it's a sad thing. You remember the losses. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the wins, I can't tell you a thing about it. I can tell you about every single loss we had. Wow. And because I think as a coach, they eat at you. You're driven by success. Mm -hmm. You're driven by the win. And uh, I say it's a sad thing because you don't enjoy <laughs> the victories. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, uh uh, just the way it is, I guess. Well, okay. when you're talking about success, <clears throat> Paul Henry helped uh, make this show happen today. Uh, my good friend, the sportsman in Lincoln County with Elk Valley Times. But it's amazing yeah. that during the good years, you get all these letters. You can talk a little bit about some yeah. of them. And just tell them about some of the letters here you got from some of the big-time yeah. coaches that everybody's going to know their names. Yeah, so. we had some guys that were recruited, you know, nationally. Uh, they were that good of players. This is a... Uh, this is a letter from Ohio State University. This was Gary Williams. Gary was the coach at Maryland in the ACC for many years and was the coach at Ohio State. Uh, this is a letter that somehow landed in our packet here. One of many that Doug uh, uh, Smith had gotten. Uh, Did from, Doug go on to play ball? Doug went on to play at the University of Virginia. Here's a letter here uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, Terry Holland. Terry was the head coach of at, at uh, Virginia, most people remember Terry Holland. He coached uh, Ralph Sampson and that crew oh. uh, in the national tournament. But I, I'm reading here, he says, uh, 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 the chemistry and the ability to pull together teams to at least give us a, a chance in most situations is coming on for, for us. Watch Doug and he has done an excellent job. He seems to have learned a lot and while his playing time may not show his improvement, he has improved. So. He kept me in the loop here. This, that was Doug's freshman year. Mm -hmm. And, of course, freshmen don't play a lot. So he's right. telling me, you know, he's, he's getting better. And, and Doug went on to have a good career. He backed up uh, John Crotty, wow. who went to the NBA for three years. Right. And, yeah, so Doug got a lot of mail like that right there. Yeah, the thing is, you mentioned uh, we talked about uh, the fact that your years were successful and these people had their eye on what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, you know, I got, I was fortunate I had good players, but you got to do something with those good players. That's right. And, you know, the more you win, the more, more notoriety comes to your, to your players. I always told my players, uh, in everything that they did, do it unselfishly. We had a sign in our dressing room at that time, two signs in our dressing room. One of the signs said, it is amazing what can be accomplished if no one cares who gets the credit. Wow. And our teams believe that. Mm -hmm. The other sign that we had was a sign that everybody had to hit when they went out of the dressing room every day or before every game. And it said, it is a big sign of Tennessee up there and had Lincoln County uh, etched out on that sign. And it said, the best D in Tennessee. Uh, so our teams believed that we were going to be the best team defensively of anybody in the state of Tennessee, and they were going to be unselfish. And our teams played that way, and they played hard, and they played sound fundamentally. 
And so for that reason, we had these guys coming to see some of our players. Mm -hmm. This is another letter to Doug from Dave Odom. David was a head coach at uh, Wake Forest. Did you happen to know that these people were in the gym? Yeah, yeah. I got to know them quite well and still know them oh, quite wow. well. In fact, I worked for Dave a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Dave had asked me if I wanted to be a graduate assistant at Wake Forest at the time. And uh, I actually thought about doing that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had three, three kids. And uh, I think at that time, four, two, and a newborn. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a GA, uh, which is a good way to get your foot in, especially with a good coach. Mm -hmm. If you want to go that route, it's a way to go. But I just could not see uh, putting my family through that. Right. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, what if? Sure, I understand. But I'm sure proud of the way my kids have turned out. Absolutely. Here's a letter to Kevin Dixon from Wimp Sanderson, uh, who was at uh, Alabama for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then here's a note from Don DeVoe. He says, congratulations on the outstanding season you've had. You and your team have worked very hard to advance to the state tournament, and you richly deserve the honor. Best of luck in the tournament. Sincerely, Don DeVoe. So, yeah, we got yeah. all types of mail and that happens when you play and you don't care who gets the trophy you don't care who gets the plaque you don't care who gets the mvp what you care is what team wins the championship well let's talk about basketball from 84 to 91 how's it changed you think today well i'll be honest with you uh, i got out of coaching i left here and went to franklin okay. and coached there for three years and then i left there and went to montgomery bell academy in nashville and that's where I retired from. And I retired in 2002. I had health issues that, in fact, I had when I was here. They just didn't progress yeah. uh, until uh, I, had to, I had to give it up. Uh, you know, I, I didn't watch a lot of basketball after I got out of it. I've been in a gym all my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everywhere I went, I heard a, bounce, a ball bouncing. <laughs> and I looked in the side, I saw clouds shooting the ball. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, mm. my mind was on that all the time. Sure. And so I, I took a back seat from that. But, you know, the game's never changed. Uh, I mean, there's a few, the arc and the three-point shot, the physicality of the game, and things they let go now that they didn't let go then. Like fouls. Yeah. But coaching's still coaching. And That's what right. I see, what I see when I watch major college, when I watch high school, I watch the teams that, are sound fundamentally, mm -hmm. that are disciplined, that play hard, and know how to execute when. That's never changed. <laughs> That's uh, and, and, and our teams did that. Mm -hmm. And we did that better than most. Mm -hmm. I always told my kids, I said, you know, we may not be more talented than the team we're playing, but I guarantee you, they won't play any harder, they won't play together any better, and their fundamentals won't be any better than yours. Wow. So I said, you got a chance every night you play. And what happened for us, we, we were able to get some good athletes and combined that teaching with that and their understanding of the game to where, you know, we became the, we became the team to knock off down here. Some very good years, and I know you want to thank your wife for taking such a, a good job of clipping all this stuff out. Here's, yeah. a, here's an, another nice shot of of uh, Bills leads Falcons to regional championship and a picture of uh, Alvin Palmer here. Yeah, yeah. That's from the Elk Valley Times. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, Nadine, my wife, you know, she raised our kids in the gym. Oh. And I tell people she raised her children. Uh, I, 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 uh, a few months ago when Franklin was having their success, I mean, Fayetteville City was having their success, uh, <coughs> Kevin had called me and talked to me and so I'd kind of uh, got a schedule from him. I said, well, I'm gonna try to catch your son down at Eagleville. That's not too far from Franklin, it's where we've lived. Yeah. And so uh, we, headed, we headed down there and, and I've, I've, I've talked to Kevin on several occasions since then. And he said, coach, he says, how in the world did you do it? He says, you had three little kids and you spent all your time with us. <laughs> and he was right. He said, you went up and picked this kid up. You went and picked this kid up who couldn't get to practice. I mean, I made, I can't tell you how many trips I made to Petersburg to pick Wallace Greer up mm -hmm. and bring him up here just a bit of practice mm -hmm. during, during a week. 
And that's, 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 I wanted to do that. I'm not, I'm not, I wanted to do that. Right. Wallace needed that. Our mm -hmm. boys needed that. Mm -hmm. But I was glad to see Kevin as an adult recognize uh, the sacrifices that were made. And I, I say that to say my kids, my kids, my three children have all done really well. And uh, my wife, Nadine, she deserves uh, much of that credit. I can tell you, I, I can tell you stories, Don. <laughs> my head was so into the game <laughs> that quite honestly, I'm embarrassed sometimes when I think about it from a Christian standpoint. I understand. I went to Hardy's down here one night after the game. We'd gotten beat and it was a road trip, got in. I'd looked at the tape in my office, been there I don't know how long, hadn't eaten. So I drove into Hardy's and ordered a, a burger and fries and quote, Coke. I paid for it and I drove off. And it wasn't until I got home that I realized that I didn't have my food with me. <laughs> because my mind wasn't on getting the food back. It was on that turnover or that bad pass <laughs> or that decision I could have made that affected the game. Yeah. Another night I came out and I took a right out of the, out of the uh, parking lot. And I was halfway to Huntsville before I realized I was headed to Huntsville, Tennessee. I think I was about Hazel Green. <laughs> And turned around and came home. So I say that to tell you, that's where your mind is. Sometimes it all happens in every and, career. And, and I think, you know, in, if you're successful in your career, especially in coaching, you live it. Yeah. You live it. And my wife and my children lived with that. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm thankful to them for that. And, uh, but at the same time, some of it I regret a little bit. Well, we thank you for your sacrifice of uh, making Lincoln County uh, basketball so successful during these years and I and you've touched the lives of many young people yeah. and uh, you know there's some positive there for sure oh it is and you know I I get I get cards from day, time to time I got one the other day from John Richardson John didn't play for me John was a student of mine and John uh, just just wrote me a little note he said coach I want you to know those morning talks I had with you in the hallway, I'll never forget them. Wow. And you get notes like that all the time. You get calls from your players. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing like the relationship of a coach and his players. You know, John Meadows would have told you that. That's right. Lewis Thompson will tell you that. And let me say it about those two guys, too. They were great to work for. Uh, uh, or work, I didn't work, work with. That's right. And uh, John, uh, he, I believe he left the year or two before uh, Lewis came in. Lewis came in, he had a tough year or two, mm -hmm. but then he got things going. Oh, yeah. Going there really well. But uh, I have just the highest respect for, the, had the highest respect for, for John and still do for Lewis. And uh, I know Lewis has been a, been a stalwart in this community. Absolutely, he is. And thank you for thank you, everything Don. you've done. Thank you for coming down from Franklin to talk to us. Uh, uh, we, we've got tons to talk about. Yeah. And I'm proud we, we covered the things we did. And uh, we thank you for talking to us. And we appreciate your, uh, what you've done for, yeah. for basketball. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's, there's so many people I'd like to say something about that I can't. I know. But uh, the support we got here, my family got here while we were here. I, I never had anything like it anywhere else, wow. even, even with the success that we had. Mm -hmm. This was a very, very special time in our lives, and we've got so many dear friends to this day uh, here in Lincoln County that uh, we'll cherish forever. Thank you. Kyle Beals has been our guest today, and we appreciate Paul Henry for being here today and uh, helping make this happen. And uh, we appreciate Kyle driving down and uh, talking to us. And we appreciate uh, you watching here on Federal Public Utilities Channel 6. I'm Don Council. We'll see you back in here next time.